confession. or I'd have made a fire. A lot of old papers. What are you doing out in this godforsaken place? A girl like you has no business out like this. <laughs> You're wet, too. Never mind about me. I'll stay where you are, like, so I get my bearings around here. Isn't this your house? Huh? Yeah, sure. Sure, this is my house. I, I just had it done over for spring, and I can't find my way around. This isn't your house. What are you doing here? Listen, sister, that's my business. Stop asking questions and roll up some of those old papers while I see if there's any wood. There is in that room over there. I fell over it when I first came in. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, there's lots of it. Piled nearly to the ceiling. <laughs> Gosh, with that wood, we could stay warm for the rest of our life. Imagine being warm the rest of your life. Maybe that's why I'm going to California. California? Is that where you're going? Yeah, I got an aunt there. She doesn't know I'm coming. I don't know how glad she'll be to see me either, but I haven't got any other place to go. Oh, here's some more paper. Oh, okay. Did I roll them tight enough? Yeah, yeah, they're okay. Hmm. Gee, that's pretty swell. The boy scouted me. <laughs> well, it's not bad, is it? Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, I feel better already. What's your name? Mary Evans. Mine's... A... Mine's Todd. Todd what? Todd's good enough. Well, look, we, uh, we'd better be thinking of getting some shut-eye. I want to get on my way early in the morning, and I guess if you're going to California, you'll need some shut-eye, too. I wonder if they have fireplaces in California. <laughs> what for? They got sun. Well, it's a long way to California, especially if you're hitchhiking. Say, look. I got some dough. Enough to get you a bus ticket. Oh, no, I wouldn't think of it. Well, it isn't right for a girl to go hitchhiking around the country. Not a gal like you. You haven't got enough for yourself. Who said I didn't have enough? I got a car. I ran it into a ditch down the road, but I'll get it out in the morning. 
Where are you bound? Back where I came from. And I thought I was coming to sort of a heaven on earth. A house, land, all mine for the taking. <laughs> and what do I get? A broken down wood pile with a lot of weeds around it. You mean this house is really yours? Now look, we've talked enough. Oh, here. Here, put my coat over you and stop worrying about things that don't concern oh. you. But where are you going to sleep? There's a pile of papers in that other room. I'll be warm enough there. Good night. Good night. Hot. Hey, I never heard such a racket. Those aren't birds. <laughs> sure, there must be thousands of them. Oh, and I thought the country was supposed to be quiet. Sounds like Times Square on New Year's Eve. The storm's over and the sun's out, Tom. I want you to see what the place looks like in daytime. Oh, I saw the weeds last night. Not the weeds. The trees. Fruit trees. Look. Say, it's not bad at that, is it? Oh, it's beautiful. All those fields stretching out green beyond the house. They must all belong to it because they're fenced just the same as the house. Imagine. All that ground. I didn't know there was so much ground left in the world. Yeah, but the weeds. So why wouldn't the weeds be waist high? Anything would grow here. You can tell just by looking out there. I bet you could have flowers and all the vegetables you wanted in almost no time. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose maybe you could. And, Todd, there's a kitchen, too. With a stove, old-fashioned range, as big as all outdoors. And there's an upstairs to the house, and above that, an attic. It smells funny up there. Kind of like a perfume, almost. You're pretty excited about this, Joy, aren't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> Your eyes are shining like a kid. Well, maybe it's the air. You can breathe. <laughs> oh, you can actually breathe. Yeah, I just try it. No, not me. I couldn't stand it. Well, I'm going someplace to see if I can round up some grub. I'm hungry. Oh, so am I. Well, there's bound to be a store around someplace. Some bacon and eggs would go pretty good right now, huh? Oh, and coffee. Don't forget coffee. Yes, sir. I'll be back in a flash with the bacon. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I thought you were never going to find that bacon. I found it all right. Found trouble along with it. What happened? We got to get out of here. What happened? Plenty, plenty. Look. Here's the dough for your bus fare, and I'll be seeing you. I don't want your money. I've made my own way all my life. I don't need help from you or anybody else. Goodbye. Hey, you're a hot-tempered little number, aren't you? <laughs> you're okay. I like you. And uh, just because I do, I'll explain about this house. It isn't really mine. Oh? It belonged to a fellow named Todd Brandon. It belonged to his family. He was the last. We, uh, we were both in the racket in New York. You mean gangsters? I never killed anybody, but I was running along with a gang. They got Brandon. But before he died, he gave me all the papers and the deed to the house. Told me to take his name and live out here just like I was a Brandon. I gathered from him that the Brandons were a special kind of people out here. Well, it would mean a new chance for you. Could put your past behind you. That was wonderful of him. Yes, but there's an uncle. An uncle Caleb Brandon out in California somewhere. He's sick and can't get about much, and he hasn't seen Brandon since he was nine. Well, then you wouldn't have to worry about him. All you have to do is fill out the papers he gave you, tell everybody you're Todd Brandon, and you are. Yeah, and just like that, I'm a guy of property. And all this land would be yours, Todd. You've got to stay. What? Don't you see? It's your one chance. My chance for what? To spend my life picking weeds? You said you had a little money. Well, about 300 bucks, that's all. Well, that 300 will buy seeds to plant your land. It'll buy paint to fix your house. It's enough to buy life, Todd. You're crazy. Oh, look out there. The trees and the grass. Even the weeds are green and strong and healthy. Part of the earth. They belong. 
And where do you belong? Nowhere. Huh? Yet you're just as much a part of that earth as they are. That's fine talk for you. Would, uh... Would you want to stay on in this dump? Would I? Oh, for all your life you'd been shoved around. Nowhere to go that you belong. No one to care whether you stayed or went. And if one day someone said that there was a house to live in and land to make your living on, and it was yours for as long as you cared to stay, do you think I'd say no? All right. All right, supposing I do like you say. Supposing I do stick on, pretend I'm Brandon. Would you stay with me? Me, Todd? Back there in the store, an old fossil that runs the place got it in his head that I that I really was Todd Brandon and that I brought back a wife with me. You mean... You mean you'd marry me? Well, if I'm going to plow the fields and plant whatever a fellow plants in a dump like this, there's still a house. And a house without a woman isn't much of a house. And a man's life would be pretty empty unless there were regular meals to come to and, well, somebody to talk things over with him when his work was done... I can't believe what you're saying is true. Will you... Will you stay? Oh, sure I will. I guess neither of us have got any past to brag about. Well, maybe that's not important. But, Todd, remember this. If things don't work out, you can go your way, and I'll understand. You're a good kid. And I'm not one to pass up a hunch. So we'll give it a whirl. Huh, baby? Yes. And what's more, I think you'll make the grade. I'm betting on Todd Brandon to win. And as Mary said, Todd was shoved around all his life. No one cared whether he stayed or not. But now, here was a chance. A long chance. Without discovery, he could be Todd Brandon. He could forget the old angry thoughts. But maybe the fear of detection might become the foundation for another obsession. you're not his real nephew. He never saw the real Todd since he was a kid. If Ezra and Marty can be fooled, and so can Uncle Caleb. But there'll be questions. There'll be his eyes looking at us, wondering, watching. So what? Listen, this place is ours. This earth is ours, yours and mine. Our field's ripe with the grain that we've planted. It's our gardens that have fed us. It's our labor that's fixed up the place and painted the house and made a home of it. It's ours, I tell you. And no Uncle Caleb or anyone else is ever going to take it from us. Uh, 
Yes, sir, Caleb. Tom thought I'd better pick you up. Yes, to help Mary. You know, that nephew of yours is made of the real Brandon stuff. Yes, sir. Really, yes, sir. And that little wife of his, she's a humdinger, too. The way they tore into that house, she'd have thought it was their last chance on earth. Their last chance, eh? They painted the place up, got hold of some fancy ideas about irrigation, and by gosh, they're growing the best vegetables and fruit in Midland. Does he look like the family? Well, I don't care, but that's a funny thing. He's a Brandon, all right, you can tell that. But he don't look like him. He's handsomer than any Brandon ever was. No, I can't rightly say there's much resemblance. I see. Hey, there's a house now. The old house. Just like it used to look when I was a kid. Same clean, trim welcome look about it. A house that could sell for quite a bit of money nowadays, couldn't it? Sure, just off the highway and Midland's blowing like anything. But they'll never sell. Not Todd and Mary. You seem very sure, yes, huh? Caleb, there's something in the back of your mind. Something worrying you. Something you ain't sure you're right about. Is it tough? Maybe it is, Ezra. And maybe it ain't. But I'll know for long. I'll know for sure. Mary and I have learned about a farm, Uncle Caleb. We've read out of books. <laughs> well, it looks as if the books were pretty fair teachers. Well, we've had luck on our side, too. Luck's a pretty handy thing, especially when you're taking the wrong chance. Yeah. Yeah, especially then. Todd, you wear Uncle Caleb out. Why don't you come inside and have something to drink? I'll build a fire and you can talk and be comfortable, too. That's a good idea, young lady. Yeah, my old legs aren't as spry as they used to be. <laughs> Here, sit in that comfortable chair, Uncle Caleb. Thank you. We haven't gotten around to doing much about the furniture. We thought we'd wait till winter when there wasn't so much work to be done outside. You poke up the fire a bit, Todd, and I'll get the drink. All right, honey. Uh, you know, Todd, it's, it's good to sit here in this old room again. I guess when you get as old as I am, you get sentimental about places you've known when you were young. You see, Todd, we Brandons belong to the real America. The America that ventured and dared and built in the days when life wasn't so easy as it is now. And the land was the thing, the great thing. That's why I've let this house stand empty all these years. Just waiting for a Brandon to come back. Because we Brandons have always felt that it would never be right for anybody but a Brandon to live in it. I think I understand how you feel. Here you are. Here's your drink, Uncle Caleb. Huh? Oh, <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Thanks, honey. Uh, well, here's to the Brandons. Yes. Here's to the Brandons. Yeah. The Brandons. Todd. Todd, we've got to tell him the truth. There's only tonight. He'll be gone after tonight. I couldn't stay on Todd and him not know. It'd be like living with a lie. Everywhere I'd turn in the house, everywhere I'd go in the field, it'd be there, haunting me. I can't do it, Todd. Neither can you. I've seen it in your eyes since he's been here. I've heard it in your voice the night he told us about the family. You can't go on any more than I can. Even if it means giving up everything. Okay. You're right, honey. We'll tell him tonight. Oh, I'm so glad, Todd. I knew you'd say that. Well, good 
Good night, Mary. Good night, Todd. This has been a wonderful week, but I better get some sleep. I'm leaving early tomorrow. Oh, just a minute, Uncle Caleb. Before you leave, Todd has something to tell you. Uh, couldn't it wait till morning? Oh, no, we've got to say it now. Because maybe it'll change your plans about leaving tomorrow. Tell him, Todd. We hadn't planned to tell you. At least I hadn't. Tomorrow would have come and you would have gone and things for us would have been just the same. We could have gone on living here, making our, making our living off your form, becoming a part of the town, carrying your name because it really isn't ours. I'm not Todd Brandon. Oh. Oh, I see. My name, my real name is Conway. When Todd died, the real Todd, he gave me the deed to this place. I filed it like it was my own. But believe me, it wasn't stealing. We didn't mean to steal it, Uncle Caleb. It was it was just that it was our only chance to make a life for ourselves. We made vegetables and crops and fruit grow where only weeds were growing before. We built a home out of a broken down wood pile. And for just a little while this earth was ours. We were Brandon's too. I've got to tell you something else, Uncle Caleb. Something I've never told Mary before. It's her doing, really. Without her, I wouldn't be here now. She taught me what it means to live. She taught me what it means to love. That's why I stayed on, because of her. It isn't exactly what he said. He taught me the meaning of living, too. He taught me about love. And, and then when you came, we saw how swear you were. And we talked it over. We knew we couldn't go on living a lie, not any longer. I'm glad you decided the way you did. Though I wouldn't have said anything in any case. You mean you knew I wasn't Todd Brandon? I knew when he died. I'd been hunting him for some time. I just learned about him. What he was and what he did and how he died. I was planning to come back here. Then I got your letter saying you'd come back to the farm to live. I thought I'd wait and see what happened. That's why I came back. Oh, I'm so glad we told you. Well, after all, being abandoned is a quality that's in a man, whether he's Tom, Dick, or Harry, or Todd Brandon. This earth is yours because you've made it so. You belong here, both of you. You belong in this house. Gosh, I don't know what to say. It's as if I was suddenly made whole again. Only one thing I've got to say. It was mostly Mary's doings. Without her, I couldn't have even pretended to be a Brandon. Well, it took both of you to do it, son. Oh, believe me, Uncle Caleb. I promise you this, that as long as Todd and I live, you'll never be ashamed of our bearing your name. That's right. We've learned what this earth of ours means. We've learned what it means to be a Brandon. What it means to be an American. Oh.